This segment of AM Northwest is brought to you by Family Matters. Health and education, safety, and the quality of life. K2 and our partners are proud to bring you Family Matters, offering solutions to the hard questions. Because K2 and Providence Health and Services know that family matters. Welcome back to Afternoon Live. While we continue to battle COVID-19, we're also heading into winter, which can mean flu and other illnesses. Here with advice on how we can protect our families, we welcome from Providence St. Vincent Medical Center, Dr. Tobias Push is with us today. Dr. Push, good to have you on. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Well, especially during this time, I think everyone's getting a little bit of anxiety because we're not just talking about COVID-19, but other viruses that are very popular in the winter. You know, can people tell the difference between these viruses and how can you tell the difference? You know, we wish really that we could, but it's very difficult. So um, there's some symptoms that, you know, might be more common with one virus versus the other, but in general terms, they overlap way too much in order for us to really tell apart. So testing would be indicated if you want to be serious about it and actually determining the diagnosis. You know, both are all, all of these diseases are very contagious. We know how contagious COVID-19 is. Is the flu as contagious? Is RSV or these other viruses also as contagious? So it also that varies. So it depends on the age, really. We're talking about um, the RSV that you brought up, the respiratory, respiratory syncytial virus, is mostly a pediatric illness. And, um, you know, it's very common for kids to be infected with them and have reinfections. Some degree of immunity develops. And so we are combating the virus uh, better as we age. But it's also prevalent in the young adult population. So it's uh, it depends on many factors of immunity and then how how prevalent it is in the population. So prevalence term from from epidemiology, meaning the proportion of the population that has a disease. And currently, um, COVID is very prevalent, right? We we have uh, positive test results in in uh, close to 15% of all the tests we're conducting currently in the state. And as such, uh, with, with the other viruses not being around currently at all, you know, we certainly suspect, first of all, this all being coronavirus, when somebody presents with typical upper respiratory tract infection symptoms. Let's say someone's put off getting that vaccination. They're looking to they get the COVID vac vaccination now. Is it safe to get all of these vaccinations at once, get the COVID at the same time as the flu? Yes, that's a very good question. And the answer to that is yes. So you can most certainly go and get both vaccines at the same time. Um, there is no wait period for either of those vaccines. Um, um, this is safe. And if uh, you know, you're know you short on time and you wanna get all your vaccines done, yes, by all means, go get that done. There's a little bit of time still for the flu vaccine. We don't anticipate the flu really being a problem until usually beginning of November, second November week, really is when we see the peak, uh, the, slowly the rise uh, to a peak. And um, if you want to space it out, get your COVID vaccine first, most importantly, and then uh, get the influenza vaccine perhaps a couple of weeks later. If you don't want to have any overlapping potential side effects with the vaccine, there are usually not all that significant clinically, but that's clearly an option. If you're already showing symptoms for the flu or for COVID, how safe is it to get the vaccination at that point? So if somebody has already symptoms of a viral illness and getting the vaccine, um, that's also a common question. So if the symptoms are really quite mild, then we don't have really a concern. The vaccine side effects can, of course, induce some symptoms, mild fever, headache, chills, things like that. And, um, you know, there's no clear study delineating that it would be unsafe to do an influenza vaccine. However, if you're clinically quite symptomatic, you want to sort of see how the illness plays out before you get a vaccine on top of it. Yeah, the symptoms from these viral illnesses generally don't last all that long and uh, postponing it for just a few days is not a clinical problem. I think we just have like 20 seconds, but what should the first step be if you are showing symptoms? I know we don't want to flood the hospitals right now. That is true. So as you've probably heard, most illness symptoms um, for any of these illnesses tend to be mild in the vast majority of the population. So if you just have mild upper respiratory tract symptoms, you have a runny nose, you have a bit of a sore throat, maybe a mild fever or a headache, it's completely reasonable to wait. If you're concerned enough about your symptoms, then call your physician's office. They will advise you further. They may either instruct you to come in and get tested, um, which is not too difficult to do. And um, otherwise they may follow up with you a couple of days later to see how your symptoms evolve. Dr. Push, thank you so much. 
Great information for everyone. And Thank we'll you. have more information about Providence Health and Services along with the links to where you can get your COVID and flu shots on our website at khcu.com.